This is Tony Nakamura from the Kurobi World Media. Books are some of the examples of karate, kung fu, shorin, kenpo, jujutsu. Okay, as a first topic, I'd like to talk about Japanese martial arts kata. So Japanese karate, which is my lineage, um, is heavily focused on kata. And uh, there are a lot of questions in every athlete, every coaches, every instructors um, as to what this kata is all about. And some people simply say, you know what, well, kata is not necessary at all. Some people say, well, it may be important for uh, training basics. Some people say it actually is uh, much more beneficial to learn kata for even tournament, kumite, street, kumite, whatever uh, fight it is that you're going to get involved. And some people just simply say, you know, what well, kata is necessary for business. You know, um, so there are a lot of questions as to why we have this weird concept called kata in Japanese karate. I've talked to a lot of senseis about kata, and everybody has a little bit of different perspective, and there are a lot of books and resources out there that's explaining about kata from many different perspectives. One of the best books I've ever read recently um, happens to be from one of our famous instructors, uh, Tatsuya Naka Sensei. Now, believe it or not, Naka Sensei has published so many books. You're probably wondering, where can I buy one? And the answer is you usually cannot. His books are published and sold to the members of his dojo, and it is not publicly sold, which is why you don't see them. And I happen to have one. The title says, The True Essence of Budo Karate, Martial Art Karate. And this is volume two. The secondary title says, Learn the Kata and Train with the Kata. And he has his name on it. And when I read this book, I was just so impressed with how organized the information is, how well it's written in that order that it is introduced and how much depth it goes into. It is very easy read, yet it really gives you so much answers to the questions that you have. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Tony, that's great, but what am I going to do? It's not translated, right? Correct. This book has not ever been translated into English or any other languages. Yes, I could translate that. Uh, just give me two years and I'll try to get this for you. But instead, like I said in the beginning, I wanted to learn with you. So it actually is much faster for me to read it and try to introduce it to you. And I want to learn with you based on that. And then I want to not just read it and just tell you what's written in it, but I want to also call Naka Sensei. You know, I want to ask him some questions about it. So I want to learn with you about this book as a first part of our series. I mean, what better to open up this new series than uh, to go over our star instructor Naka Sensei's material and talk to him. So the first chapter of his book is titled as Why Kata Now? And he goes through the purpose of kata training, important factors of kata training, and then he also goes into the lineage. So there's a Shirite line in Okinawa, there's a Nahate line in Okinawa, and then there's also a Tomarite line of Karate. Those are three major lineage of Karate. You know, each one has its own characteristics. And of course, Shotokan uh, belongs to Shirite lineage. Uh, so he goes into that, and then he concludes the first chapter by explaining the Kata training makes a lifelong training possible. So in reading the first part of his book, here's how I interpret it. The definition of kata. Kata is defined as a training method defined and created by the martial art ancestors of that style and it is the representation of the uniqueness of that art. Now that's very interesting because the key word here is that kata is a representation of unique characteristics of that style. So let's break that down a little bit. What does that mean? How I interpret it was this. If there are 10 people, for example, out there who are willing to learn martial arts, but they're very new, and one person uh, each visits many different dojos, but that person saw a dojo that focuses on kicks. And everybody can kick so well because the master of that dojo has spent most of his life mastering the kicks and therefore, the training method revolves around kicking. And the second person who also visited many dojos, but uh, maybe he uh, finds 
the striking focus dojo fascinating and some find the grappling fascinating some uh, focus on uh, maybe techniques that you can't use in the tournaments are fascinating. It's very different. It's not that one is better than the other. They all do very well what they do, but they're just different. And if you look at it that way, um, it really makes sense because what you're taught on one hand in your dojo, a certain kata, and you're told, hey, do it this way because it's correct and don't do it this way because it's incorrect, may be the total opposite in other dojo where in that other dojo, what you're told correct is incorrect and what you're told is incorrect is correct. And we tend to think about it as who is better or what style is better than the other, but it really isn't about what is better and what is worse, but really it's about uniqueness to that style. So given that they're all authentic and they're really training hard and they have reasons as to exactly why, backed up by the long history uh, and the facts and researches, then it's just a matter of a uniqueness. It's not that one's better than the other. At that point, it's more like who's doing it and who is representing it better, who's using it better for what purpose. So I find that very fascinating because in that short key concept of kata is a representation of uniqueness of that style really answers a whole bunch of questions about kata to everybody in any level. So this is how I interpret it too. Now let's think you are working on a kata that has a lot of gyakuzuki, the reverse punch. All you're doing is going through this set of reverse punches in the kata, maybe different directions, maybe different timing, and you're doing this for a long, long, long time, years at a time. And by learning that one technique, you're actually learning tens, maybe twenties, different variations of say that reverse punch or whatever the technique that you're learning from the kata. So the kata is not really about, oh, I know 20 katas, oh, I know 30 katas. It's actually about learning each kata so deeply and you can only have so many in your life. You may know 20, but you may go very deep on two or three. And going through that so deeply that you're not just learning those 20 whatever steps, 30 whatever steps, but you're actually learning 300 techniques, 400 techniques, right? Because their variants of the technique that you're learning in kata is now just pouring out of you after all this hard, repetitive training. Now, to summarize, what I read was that kata represents the unique characteristics of that style and you're supposed to train very repeatedly over a long period of time so that techniques will diffuse into you and then you can use those techniques freely and it will also allow you to naturally come up with variants of the technique that you're learning. To me, that's very similar to actually cloning yourself to the ancestors. So some of what I just said was my interpretation from reading part of his book. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct, incorrect, not sufficient, or reading too much into it. So what I did was to contact Naka-sensei himself and explain how I interpreted it, and then I wanted to hear what he had to say. So then here it was. え、先生のですね、え、まずあの、第1章を正しい町が違い、こっちがいではなくてその流儀というものをま特徴付けるはい、方法であるとこうそのその形成役的なあの型を練習として傾向として悪なき長い時間をかけて体に染み込ませて染み込んでからそのはざを使いこなすようになりそ
あの理解がちょっと足りなかったりあのもしくは先生の,その映像としてこれを説明していただけると嬉しいです。そうですね、はい、型っていうのはやっぱりその期限がなかなかわからないのが当然多いわけですよね。<笑>その特に古典型では。でそれは本当に何十年続いてるのか何百年続いてるのか。もしかしたら1000年近く続いているのがあるかもしれないわけです。はい、でそれを例えば一生人間一人が、まあ、約100年弱生きるとしたとしても、その100年かかっても解けないものを何代も何代も続けているからこそ、うん、1000年かけて一つのものを追求していく。うん、でしかもそれをご親切にあの体系づけてあのいろんな気づきを教えてくれる。つまり、はいあのクローンみたいに例えば僕は一生中先生みたいななれないですけれどもでももし中先生がそれをこうよしじゃあこれを今まで僕はあの学んで少なくとも今完成形にたどり着いたものをこういう手順でこういう型をマスターしていけばまあ要はそこまでいかないにしても中クローンがたくさんできるぐらいのまあ集約されたものになっていくつまり中先生もあの僕も空手をやってる全ての人が型を通じてその何代も続いた先人たちのマスターたちの DNA を使って自分の中に取り入れてコピーしてクローンしていってるんじゃないかっていうだから月一つでも意外と僕はあのあのそれちゃんとしてればの話ですけど将来一回でももしかしたら松村宗根先生があのついていたらとほと,んほとんど同じような感じでできるんじゃないかっていうロマンがあるわけです、うん、そういう、はい、DNA でえをつこう紡いでいく。っていう意味での型の型っていう考え方はどうでしょうかいや、まさしくそうだと思いますね。あのー、もう簡単に言うと、設計図だと思うんですよ。で日本に折り紙ってあるじゃないですか。で、折り紙の折り方ってあると思うんですよね。じゃあ、鶴を折ろうと思ったときに、まあ、見た目じゃ折れないですね、見ただけじゃ。で、ガリュレいろいろ勉強しても、やはり時間もかかりますし。おるまでにものすごい時間がかかると思うんですよ。でもそこにはちゃんと折り方っていうのがあるじゃないですか。まあそれは一つの型だとすれば、その折り方通りにちゃんとできれば、綺麗なツーになりますし、飛行機であれば、その通りに折れば飛ぶわけですよ。画流で作っちゃったら飛ばないわけじゃないですか。だかそれが一つの型の役目だと思うんですよね。はい。学んでも全員が同じ形になるわけじゃないんですよね。同じものを学んでも、私は私なりの空手ができちゃいますし、トニーさんはトニーさんの空手ができちゃいます。そのように誰が学んでもできるようになっているのが型の素晴らしさだと思うんですよ。大きい人、小さい人、いろんなタイプの人がいるじゃないですか。その人がそれぞれがみんなができるようになっていると思うんですよね。はい。型にはめ込んで、はめ込んで、はめ込んで、そこから突き出たもの、飛び出したものが本当の自由であり、本当の個性であるって考え方ですからね。そこまで叩き込むのは大変なことなんですけど、その前に個性が出てしまうと、それはあくまでも我流になるわけですね。さっき言った飛行機も紙飛行機も飛びませんし、鶴も折れませんし。はい。So that was awesome.Not only I was able to convey to him how I understood the first chapter of his book, he confirmed it And he came back with a simplified and better example of kata being a blueprint. Blueprint for Japanese folding paper, origami, and also for airplane. It was such an easy way to understand what kata should be, and he introduced a lot of new concepts. And I wanted to talk about that, but we're out of time. So, in the next episode, I'd like to continue talking about this, but even deeper into what Naka sensei was trying to explain to us. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next episode.